This film is about cultural renaissance independent India went through in the 1950s and 60s. Bombay with poets, writers, national media editors, artists was a platform for such a dialogue. Hebar had an active role in this melting pot. Hebar's dialogue started with illustrating the poetry of a poet like Harivansh Rai Bachchan or writing a children's book with a famous editor like Tulkaraj Anand. Soon it went beyond to an intense engagement. Mulkaraj was featuring Sikh religion in Marg. He wrote to Habar, You are a people's artist. From your rustic background, your roots are firmly in your memory. Amritsar in 16th century, only you can draw with your lines. Dr. Dharmavir Bharti had a high impact voice in shaping Indian opinion as editor of Dharma Yug. His friendship with Habar developed in presenting abstract issues in his magazine. Suicidal fight between two factions of Congress was aptly represented by Habar's cockfight painting. He wanted to bring to national audience life of Tulsidas, author of Ramcharit Manas, unknown compared to Valmiki. Bharti collaborated with Habar to bring it to national audience through the book Tulsidas Habar's Illustration in Lines. There are many outcomes of Habar's work with his intellectual contemporaries. In this film, we go into two high-impact examples of cultural renaissance. I am Rekha Rao, daughter of K.K. Hebar and a painter myself. This is a good opportunity for me to speak on the works that he is renowned for. Hebar is renowned for his line drawings through which he conveyed a wealth of thoughts and emotions. He had a friend named Professor Govindraj Venkatachalam, who was a connoisseur of art and culture. And Professor Venkatachalam had worked for some time with Annie Besant for the Theosophical Society in Adyar. It was he who introduced my father Hebar to A.S. Raman, first Indian editor of the Illustrated Weekly of India, after Sean Mandy retired from that post in 1953. A.S. Raman was a great lover of art and culture and promoted artists, musicians and dancers in his popular weekly. Raman commissioned Hebar to illustrate the Silapadikaram, an epic poem in 5730 verses written in the 5th and 6th century AD by a Jain monk, Ilango Adigal. Union of Kanangi and Kovalan seemed blessed by the divine Lakshmi Narayana. An auspicious day was chosen by the astrologers of the two families for the marriage ceremony. The people of Puhar rejoiced and blessed the royal couple. Madhavi stepped on the stage and began to sing and dance. The Sempian, wearing the anklets of the victor, enraptured by her performance, bestowed on Madhavi a garland of green leaves and 1,000 pieces of gold. This was exhibited in the main street with the proclamation that he who possessed this garland would win Madhavi's heart. It was Kovalan who entered her house. Entranced by Madhavi's songs and dance, Kovalan revels in the throes of Madhavi's embrace. Kanagi is forgotten and left behind. Kovalan abandons his wife and walks away. He comes across a humped bull considered a sign of ill omen by the herdsmen. He goes to Madurai to continue with his wayward life. Vasantamala Madhavi's maid, consoling her mistress, says, Dear mistress, though you sorely miss him this evening, he will return with the dawn. Madhavi's heart was overwhelmed with grief as she lay awake all night on the couch strewn with the flowers of spring. At the end of the very 
dark days. It was indescribable joy that awaited Kanagi. Her maid rushed in, announcing, Mistress, our good lord is back. He awaits at the entrance. Kovalan stood at the door, full of remorse. Kanagi left the palace and roared, O gods in heaven, virtuous Brahmins, people of the city of misery, Madurai of the four temples, heed my words. Blameless was my husband and so am I. Damned be the city, whose Pandyan king unjustly put my lord to the sword. There was a cultural renaissance happening in India after independence. Colonial medium like the Illustrated Weekly of India was taking on a new avatar to bring Indian cultural heritage to the Indian audience. Editors, artists and other cultural icons collaborated in this movement. K.K. Hebar and A.S. Raman took the Tamil epic Silapadikaram to the national audience by featuring the epic through Hebar's line drawings. A very warm welcome to all our viewers. I am Rajini Prasanna, daughter of K.K. Hebar. On the birth anniversary of Hebar, I would like to talk on his interaction with artists, poets and the performing artists which brought about a cultural renaissance. As this topic is vast, I shall speak of Hebar and Shivram Karanth and how they explored folk art dance drama tradition. Both Hebar and Karanth grew up in Canara districts. In their early days, both were influenced by the local folk dance drama from Akshayakana. Later, as they grew up and travelled, they saw that it flourished in some parts similar to Yakshagana, like Terukottu in Tamil Nadu, Tamasha in Maharashtra, Chau in Orissa, and Kathakali in Kerala. Hebar had captured in his line drawing their essences. When Karanth wrote his treatise in 1958 on Yakshagana tradition, he expressed his wish to use them in his treatise. He writes, My friend Hebar has given me the line drawings for my treatise. I can confidently say that no realistic photography can bring out the liar Tarangite Arthavantike his line drawings bring out. For his contribution, however, much I praise Hebar, it falls short of what he deserves. Karanth was experimenting to create a ballet form of folk art. In 1962, the ballet pilot was ready to make its debut. Three changes were introduced after discussion with Hebar. The high decibel level was replaced by songs with music. Time was reduced from 12 hours to 3 hours. Costumes and accessories were varied in different performing groups. Hebar made sketches and standardized the costumes and accessories. Male role in his ballet would be played by women. These changes were accepted by Karanth. Another important uh, incident I would like to bring to the notice is the collaboration between the artist and the writer. Shuram Karanth compared his stage with colors, with decorations, to a painting where an artist faces a blank canvas and starts working on it. He said even a playwright should do what, what he would like to do was to amalgamate the colors, the movement, the dance, the singing, all together to form one huge painting. So throughout we find that whether it is art, painting, music, dance, there is a lot of collaboration. In 1962, two ballets, Abhimanyu Vadai and Bhishma Vijaya were performed in Bombay. Success of the ballet gave Karan confidence to implement changes. Hebar was largely influenced in helping Karan to regenerate the waning folk art. He did posters and with his friends Vyas Rao Ballal and members of the newly instituted association called Yakshagana Punar Jagrati Sangha, he saw that the posters were pasted all along the water pipe connecting Powai Lake to Bombay. This support from his well-wishers helped Karan to take it forward to Europe and the US. There were however both supporters and critics who said his experiments were going against traditional art forms 
and misusing government funds. But Hebar argued that Karanth not only upheld the flag of tradition, but had the power to institute a new tradition itself. He cited the case of Isidora, Duncan and Martha Graham. In India itself, Amrita Shergill tolerated art criticism and so did Uday Shankar, the Kathak dancer. In 2022, HGAC and Mahe Manipal sponsored the premiere of the Hindi translation of Abhimanyu Bade to Chakraviva by Yakshagana Kendra Group from Udupi, which received overwhelming response. Yakshagana, which began as an all male actors, have now planning to bring out an all women actors into the stage. Experiments are going on, and I wish everyone the best of luck to see something exciting coming in the future. Thank you.